Hey guys, today I'm going to be making Mary Berry's Hot Cross Buns. So if you start singing the song in your head, that's what I do every time I say it too. Um, so these are Mary Berry's recipes. So I wanted to show you the ingredients we're going to use first. It looks like a lot, but it's really not that bad. We have uh, 500 grams, and this is a European recipe, so everything's weighed out. So we weighed everything on a scale. So you got 500 grams of strong white flour, which is just for us, just just uh, self-rising flour. You need 75 grams of caster sugar, or just sugar. Uh, two teaspoons of mixed spice powder, and that's this one. And we bought this while we were in England. Um, you can make this yourself if you're in the United States. You might be able to find it in specialty shops too, like Whole Foods or something. Maybe you'd be able to order it on Amazon, but we bought it while we were over there. Uh, there are recipes online, so if you need it, you can, you can find it. So two te teaspoons of that. One teaspoon of just ground cinnamon. You need two teaspoons of salt, which is right here. You need um, 10 grams of yeast, the fast acting yeast. This was about a pack and what, a third maybe? Something like that. Just weigh it out, that's what you do. Uh, four, 40 grams of butter, wherever my butter is, and it's melted. 30 grams of milk, th or 300 milliliters of milk, sorry. One egg. You need 200 grams of sultanas. We didn't have to have sultanas at a local store, but so we used raisins, but you can go, you can buy sultanas at other stores. We just didn't have one close by us. You need 50 grams of chopped mixed peel. We have a recipe, we have a, um, a video up showing how to make this. This one is one lemon, one orange, and one um, grapefruit peel, and it's chopped up, finely chopped. And then the oil for greasing, and I forgot to mention the um, one lemon that was finely uh, grated zest. So this is just the peel of a lemon, basically. And then for the topping, I didn't get it out yet, but you'll need 75 grams of plain flour and two tablespoons of golden syrup for glazing. We have golden syrup. You could probably use Cairo syrup. I don't know for sure. I think I would just try to get golden syrup if you can. So here's what we're gonna do first. Get your bowl, get your big mixing bowl is what we have. And you add your flour. And at first we're going to do this by hand. So you get your flour, your sugar. All your spices, your cinnamon. And your mixed spice. And your lemon zest. It doesn't seem like that would be much to do anything, but it will add a lot of flavor. You'd be amazed at how much a little zest will add a flavor to it. And then, um, okay, and then we're just kind of going to mix this together and combine it together. Just use your fingers. This one all kind of incorporated. The reason I'm not doing this with the mixer paddle, cause you don't really need to right now, but you really want to try to get it by hand when we start mixing the dough up. You need to be able to fill it with your hand to kind of get the, um, get a feel for it. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I've got my butter. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add my salt and my, my uh, yeast, but put them on my opposite sides of the bowl. So I'm gonna put my salt on that side. I'm gonna put my yeast over here. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my milk and I'm gonna warm it up in a pan. You don't want it hot, you just want it warm and I'll be back once it's warmed up. Okay, my milk's warmed up, so now I'm gonna add my butter. I'm gonna pour it right here in the middle. And you want about half your milk. You don't wanna pour all of it in there. You want about half. You got a paper towel just to keep the drippings from going. And then add your egg. And I'm just going to get in there with my hand, nice and warm. It's like I'm taking a shower. <laughs> and you want it to form a dough that comes away from the side that's not real wet. Like right now it's kind of, it's dry right now, but it's, see it's too dry. So then you need to add milk. You may not use all the milk, and I may have said that. If I did, I'm sorry. But um, we need to add some more of that milk to it just to get a little wetter.
I think the rest of that flour will be pulled in when I mix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my fingers off. But I've got a dough hook. I'll put my dough hook on my mixer and I'm going to I'm going to knead it with the dough hook for 10 minutes. And uh, but as I'm kneading that, once it gets kind of started, I'm going to add my sultanas and my peel to the mix and let it get all mixed in. So um, I'm going to do that next. I'm going to clean my hands off first and I'll be right back. All right, it's done kneading, and uh, and actually, I didn't want to leave it on here too much any longer. Um, it's been um, seven minutes or so, six minutes, six seven minutes, and uh, but it's it looks very elastic. It's very uh, smooth. So so now you want to take this and put it into a greased bowl, and all I do is have a bowl and I spray cooking spray in there. Um, some people use other oils, but cooking spray works pretty good. So just put it in there. Oh yeah, it's a it's a tight, stiff dough. So that's gonna sit in here. I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap, and then uh, let it rise for about an hour and a half uh, until it's basically doubled in size. So if you need, if it hasn't doubled, if you need it uh, two hours, then you may leave it in there two hours. All right, here it is. It actually ended up being two hours, but uh, we're in kind of a cold, cool kitchen right now. So I actually moved it to a warmer room and it actually rose a lot better once I moved it. So if I'd left it for an hour and a half in a warm room in the first place, it would have probably been better. So now what I want to do is this has to be broken up into 12 different uh, balls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got my scale. And I'm going to take it out of this bowl, if I can get it out, oh yeah, pretty easily. I'll put the bowl on my scale, zero it out, and then I'm going to lay this in here. What I want to do is I want to figure out how many grams each ball needs to be. So I'm going to take my calculator, 1151 divided by 12. So they need to be basically 96 grams each. So now that I know that, I'll take this out. And let me get my cutter. And you see it got pretty good. I'm gonna probably mush that just a little bit to get those raisins kind of mixed in there better. There we go. It's a 96 grams each. So tear, get it zeroed again. And I don't know how big 96 is gonna be, but we'll we'll see. The good thing about this scale is, it, oh wow, you can get much closer <laughs> than that. Um, the good thing about this scale is you can just clean it off really good. So make a ball. And I've got a pan with a parchment paper on it. And you're going to put these fairly close together. So you're going to put it on the pan and just flatten it slightly. Like a, almost like a biscuit. <laughs> or a uh, scone. If you're in way too big. And then peel a little bit more on. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to make uh, these balls. And um, you should make 12. And I'm gonna fit as many as I can on here. I'm thinking about, I'd probably go three uh, wide and probably four deep. So that should be all 12 on the pan. Once I get these uh, all cut out on the pan, they are gonna rise. You're supposed to put them in, um, you're supposed to put this whole thing in a bag and not have the bag cover. It's like a, you puff it up with air and you let it rise in the bag. I don't have a bag that's gonna fit with that. So I'm not gonna use a bag. I'm just gonna let it rise. Uh, 40 to 60 minutes in a warm room. And, um, and then I'll be back to actually uh, um, show you what they look like at that time. And there they are, all pressed out and washing my hands while he's recording. So I'm gonna let these uh, warm up and are set in a warm room for uh, probably 60 minutes. I'll probably just go ahead and do the 60 minutes. They should be about double in size. Hey, right, here's what they look like. They've pretty much risen as good as they're gonna rise. So now you wanna do the cross on the top. 
So first of all, we got my oven preheated to 425, so you want it preheated, ready to go. Um, I've got 75 grams of water, I mean of uh, flour, and then you want to add 100 milliliters of water to it. And we're going to mix that up until it makes kind of like a thick paste. I also have a piping bag. You can, Tammy can show you that. I got a piping bag. It's got a three milliliter or millimeter um, piping tip on there. And it's just a regular old piping bag you would do frosting or whatever with. So it's a thick, thick, thick um, paste, which is what they said you should have. So. So I'm going to take this and spoon it into my piping bag. This is always the fun part. Ha uh ha. -huh. Not fun at all. Okay, so you just really, literally just pipe across on here and we'll see how this works out. So these are going to go in the oven for, um, 15 to 20 minutes and then the, when they're, they'll be golden brown and you take them out and then we'll get the golden syrup we'll, we'll have to heat that up but we'll we'll do that when we get these out okay here they are look really good they smell good the crosses aren't quite what i was expecting i mean it's not bad but they're not as flat as i was expecting them to be but they're okay um so now you want to take um this is the lyle's golden syrup um you can get this at at Especially markets like fresh market and stuff like that. They may even have it at Whole Foods. I'm not sure But you need to take um, like two or three tablespoons of this Just heat it up in a pan just to make it a little um, more runny than this and then you're just gonna brush it over top So let me heat this up in a bowl and, and I'll be back Okay, now just microwave this so it's 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 fine So what you want to do is take these off um, and put them on a wire rack and let them cool a bit. Um, they don't have to be room temperature or anything, but you do want them cooled off a little bit, but they're, they're really good brown, um, shiny brown right now. Okay, I looked up some of the history of hot cross buns. It says traditionally eaten during the Lent, especially the week leading up to Easter. A 12th century monk was the first person to mark the bun with a cross in honor of Good Friday. There are lots of different myths about, I mean, different stories about this, but that is supposed to be the first one. Uh, the bread symbolizes communion. The spices represent the spices Jesus was wrapped in, um, in the tomb. And then you have the cross. So, hot cross buns. So, are you ready? Yeah, I'm gonna grab this one. No, yeah. You can grab you whatever. Or do you wanna just use? No, uh, that's, let's see. I'm now you can eat these by themselves. Or we get a small them, one. Or you can eat them with butter. Ooh, they're very hot. I'm going to try the top. So it has that golden syrup on it. I'm going to try the top just by itself. Okay. The smell is amazing. It has a very nice smell. It does. It's different though. I don't think I've ever eaten anything that tastes anything like this, ever. I love the mixed peel. Yeah, you can taste that. It's got like a bitter citrusy kind of flavor. The mixed peel is delicious. There's a little crunch to it. And the butter. The top's very sticky. Where these mm -hmm. just came out, they're still warm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you let them cool off where they're kind of room temperature, they wouldn't be that sticky. I didn't want to wait. I was in a hurry. Well, the house smells amazing. Let's see. I'll tell you what, you really do taste that peel. Yes. That peel makes I think I get peel and the raisins, and then the um, I get a little bit of the spice. Mm. That's good. Those are very good. I think when you eat it with butter, some of the other flavors are lost. I agree. You can't kill some of the spice. Mm -hmm. I agree 100%. Um, I do have to say, I looked up the sultanas and raisins. Raisins are a little drier and they're not quite as plump and sweet 
as a sultana. I wonder if a sultana would add it would have done a little bit different, um, a little bit different flavor. I don't know. I looked up a lot of different people that were talking about them in the United States, and they used raisins because I get they're common. Uh, yeah, sultanas are hard to get over here. Yeah, sultanas are not. They're from Greece. Yeah, they're not available like they are in the United Kingdom. Mm. I think those are delicious. Those are good. Not something I'd want to eat all the time. But for a once a year thing, a special like breakfast or whatever, yeah. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, well. And they are vegetarian. That's probably why you can eat them on lunch. And I'm, I'm thinking that you eat them for lunch on. Uh, oh, for that day? Yeah. I don't I'm, know. I have no clue. Yeah, I would think. I don't know. Would you eat them with dinner or would you eat them just any time? So, do you like it better with or without butter? I really like it both ways. I, I like both. it better without. It has a little bit more of that spice flavor without. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. And I really like that spice flavor. I also read that there are many, many different varieties. I read in Australia that they do a chocolate hot, hot cross bun. Hmm. But I read that um, that Tesco and Waitrose, that they have like nine varieties or something of hot cross buns. They make them with um, all different sorts of things. Apples and cinnamon and all kinds of things. But not everybody may like sultanas. And... Mixed peel, right. Yeah. But I think that mixed peel, if you didn't have that in there, uh, I mean, that makes it. That... It does. It, it adds that, that just a little bittery sweetness to it. I mean, yeah. that tartness to it. Yes. Very, very good. And I love the flavor of the raisins. Good, think... good texture and everything. Yes. That's very nice. This was the first time we've ever had. that we've ever had one. Yeah. That we've ever, we've never in our lives had a hot cross bun. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I'm going to do differently, the, I know the recipe said how much paste, but my cross paste, I think I would have made it a little bit thinner to where it would have spread a little bit more, like a little wider, mm -hmm. or piped it wider. I think it's. I think I needed to do it a little thinner because it's actually. You think crispy. you needed to add a little bit. A of, little bit more water, water to water it. To yeah, that. just to thin it out. Just a, not a lot. Just a teeny tiny little bit more, um, and I think it would have made it wider. Mm -hmm. Instead of just sitting on top, it would have. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't. Maybe it would have made any difference at all. That's why I would have tried next if right. I did it again. Well, these are good. I and, all mine. Yes, I'm, I'm working <laughs> on mine. And I also read that you can eat them warm, you can eat them cold. Uh, so it just, it's up to you how you eat them. And the dough, uh, that recipe said the dough was good for a month in the freezer. Mm. So you can make it up ahead of time and then pull it out, thaw it out, and then make the actual buns. Right. Well, we will probably store these in a Ziploc bag. Yeah, once they cool off and they're not sticky. I wonder if you could store them in the freezer. After you made them. Oh, maybe. Maybe. It just said they were good for a month. I don't know. I bet you could because you can store bread in the freezer and yeah. it's fine coming out. I'm sure you could store these yeah. too. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I put Kevin up to this. Uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I could tell he enjoyed it. So, I hope you all enjoyed it too. If you've had the different varieties, let me know in the comments what variety you've had that's not the original because... I would like to hear about the different varieties that are out there. I think that's really cool because we don't see them. I don't see them in our grocery stores, really. So I think you go to a bakery and get them, but that's it. Yeah, they make them different here. They make them. Uh, they make them with frosting. With frosting, like a like a, not frosting, but it's icing. glaze. Yeah, no, they like actually a sugar take glaze. icing, like yeah. and put yeah, like I've seen them with frosting, white frosting, oh, yeah. where they have made the cross with white white frosting. Yeah, that's so, different. Yeah, this is but this is the. We were trying to make them the traditional way. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.